All right, guys, today we're going to be ranking some tiny, tiny little neck knives for their survival, applicability, and whether or not they're good, whether they're bad, or ultimately where I think they stack up in this little list. So I'm going to be going from smallest to tallest, essentially, because that's a lot of how the usability and usefulness of neck knives goes, at least in my opinion. So we're going to start off with the smallest of the most viable uh, neck knives, in my opinion, and work our way up from there. So without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram, all of it helps a ton. So the first one on the list, of course, is going to be the tiny TRC Mini. Now, this guy is probably, like I said, the smallest viable option, in my opinion, for a neck knife that you could push into survival tasks. And realistically, this one is at the bottom of the list for ranking because I think that it is really better suited to be a more of a companion knife. And while it does have a sharpened edge and actually a pretty good, I think like inch and a half edge length, it is just really a super tiny blade. And in my opinion, without doing some kind of modification like I did for this one, I think it's pretty unusable as far as trying to get a good grip on it now however i will say if you do add a little bit of a lanyard for a pinky extension you can get a full five finger grip it's not the most comfortable or the most uh you know stable because of course your pinky is on this lanyard but it does allow your pinky to kind of wrap around and get a more stable grip on this knife should you need to do things like feather sticking or processing game animals. Now, of course, this thing isn't really gonna be a, a blade that you can baton with, uh, but the fact of the matter is you can push it into some survival, light duty survival tasks. So that is the tiny TRC Mini. And uh, yeah, most people don't know I have this little guide, but I do, and I do occasionally use it. It honestly, most of the time, lives as a companion blade on my bigger, tops tom brown tracker because it does actually serve a pretty good pretty righteous role in the fact of being a companion knife to the tom brown tracker so yeah that is where this little guy lives but most of the time but it is a neck knife still Okay, next one up on the list, and going up in size just a little bit, honestly, it's not too much bigger. Actually, maybe it is a little bit bigger, but uh, this one is the Topps MSK or Mini Scandi Knife. Now, once again, similar to the uh, TRC, this is one that if you don't have a serious kind of lanyard on it, it is going to be a three finger knife, but with the lanyard, you can add kind of a four finger there and get a little bit more comfy of a grip. Now for me, the MSK is one of those knives that I think is so close to being great, but just isn't because of this handle. And when you look at it, even in comparison to the TRC Mini, I actually like the TRC Mini handle a little bit more. And that is because on the Topps MSK, they made this handle very, very thin, especially right up here. And that does not help the ergonomics at all. So you can see how with this TRC, it's pretty wide. And even though it is a very thin knife, it is still pretty wide. So when you go to put your fingers around it, it does feel like you're actually holding on to something whereas with this msk the way that they designed it uh you know you your pointer or index finger really just wraps too much around this kind of finger choil area and then the other thing i dislike is that they really designed this handle for three fingers so when you try to put your fingers around it there's almost enough room for a fourth finger but because this slopes off right here and basically just cuts right off your fourth finger just really cannot find a good home so you can almost get four fingers it's like three and a half fingers on the grip i really wish in my opinion that they would have made the blade slightly smaller and made the handle slightly longer because for me in my opinion if you're going with a small knife like this ergonomics are really the key and so i think you know you're not going to have a long blade either way with a knife of this size. So I try to lean more towards making sure that all my fingers can fit on a tool as opposed to having a longer blade. That being said, if you do work it out ergonomically, and once again, like I threw this pinky extension lanyard on here, um, you know, if you work it out ergonomically, this blade is comfortable enough and it is a pretty cool looking blade. I just wish that it was a little bit better designed. 
Okay, next one up on the list and probably one of my all-time favorites, but still not quite good as far as survival goes, is the Mora Eldris. Now, the Mora Eldris is really essentially like what I said. When it comes to the Tops MSK, you can see it's actually a little bit smaller than the MSK, but when you put it uh, butt to butt, you can see that the handle, hopefully you guys can see there, that the handle extends a good noticeable portion past where the handle ends on this Tops MSK. And that's because, once again, Mora understands that what's most important with a, having a small knife isn't to have a long blade, but to have a good handle that you can really comfortably get for fingers on. You can see that this does not have a lanyard on it because I can easily get all four of my fingers on it and I have a very small, very tiny blade here, but it works quite well. And most importantly, it's a very comfortable knife because they not only gave you a longer handle, but they also made this handle nice and thick. So the Eldris is one that's very popular with my community, but for good reason. It is a really solid Okay, stepping up a little bit more. Now we're actually getting into some real size knives in my opinion, and this is the SC Azula 2. Now this is one that I might actually end up regrinding because I feel like, especially for its size in comparison, kind of as a spoiler alert, to the next knife, but this SC Azula 2 I find to be just a little bit on the thicker end for what it is, at least as far as the blade stock goes. Like the handle thickness is good, but the blade stock thickness I think is a little bit too much. However, However, as far as it goes, you can always, of course, regrind this, make it a little bit more slicey. It's not dull, but I think it could be a little bit better. In addition to that, though, I think that this is really where you start to get into a viable neck knife size, where this is still a very easy knife to neck knife carry, so to speak, but also at the same time, it is now a comfortable knife where, you know, as far as a full finger, four finger grip goes, um, you know, you easily have that plus a little bit of surplus. You also have, uh, you know, a good usable blade size. So in comparison to the last knife I just showed, this is the more Eldris versus the, you know, SC Azula. And I'll do the MSK as well. So this is your MSK versus the SC Azula. And it's actually not too much of a difference between the two but this is a really uh, well thought out neck knife that aside from the blade thickness being a little much, I think honestly is pretty much a win in every other way as far as a survival neck knife goes. In addition, what's also very nice, and I don't think it was necessarily intentional, but with this guy, they kind of, you know, keep these handle slabs recessed back. So if you do need to baton with this blade, you know, you have your blade length here, but realistically you can baton with about this much blade length. So you got like that much to actually use when you're batoning with this guy. So I think it's probably not an intentional design to it, but very much appreciated the fact that you actually have a little bit more space to work with and you can span just a little bit larger logs. Now, once again, these are all still neck knives, so you're gonna be taking down a tree with this thing, but every inch does count. So anyways, that is the S Azula, and that's why it's placed a little bit higher up in the list uh, because it just is a little bit better for survival. Now, as I spoiled in the now, as I already spoiled, the next one and the last one up on the list is the SE3. I think the SE3 is probably one of the best survival neck knives you can get because while it is on the larger side, and to show you, this is the uh, TRC Mini versus the SE3. So it is quite a bit larger, but once again, it is a very thin blade stock and a very thin handle stock that is nice and wide. So you still get a very, very comfortable grip, but it is a very carryable blade and very easy to throw in as a neck knife on your body and uh, have this for whatever you need to do. And once again, being thin, it is super slicey, super useful for a lot of true neck knife tasks. But at the same time too, it is also big enough where you can span some good wood with it. Like this is uh, the, SC Azula versus it. So you're going to get, you know, a little over three inches of a blade length to span um, for batoning. So it's definitely not a bad blade in that regard. And it can be pushed into a wide variety of different tasks uh, for, uh, for survival. And I think as far as like, if I had to choose any one of these knives as a go-to neck knife for survival, this would probably be my number one choice. 
So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at the, this wide variety and wide size range of knives for survival as far as neck knives go. Now, neck knives as a whole are not my favorite for survival. Things like the uh, Formax Scout from Cold Steel are definitely like above this for me because they're easier to carry but still equally as robust. But if you are dedicated or if your desire is really to run neck knives for survival, these are some options and you know some are definitely better than others. So anyways guys, hopefully the video was helpful. As always, God bless and I'm out.